In 1980, Dan Pohl led the PGA Tour in driving distance at 274 yards. Today, that would put him at 218th. This year, Rory McIlroy leads the PGA Tour at 349.5 yards. Don't kid yourself, everybody's in search of distance. Will we take the right path or will we take the wrong path? This guy obviously took the wrong path. No one wants an 8 on their scorecard. Here are some of the wrong paths. Using the body instead of the arms. Using the wrong muscles. Bodybuilding the wrong muscles. And one of my all-time favorites, using the ground for power. Trying to create speed all the way to the ball and trying to create a bigger arc. If you try one of these paths, you'll end up wasting your time and have to start all over again. But if you choose the right path, you're going to discover a pot of gold. I've been studying the golf swing since age 11, and I know I've found the real secret to distance. And here it is. This is Justin Thomas creating shaft flex. This is where the real power comes from. Shaft flex is a combination of bend and torque. I'm bending this fiberglass rod parallel to the ground. You can see that when I let the tip go, the tip goes right into the ground. Now I'm bending this stick on plane. When I let it go, it goes out beyond the target line. Now I'm bending the stick and torquing it. Watch what happens to the tip. It goes around me. Here's another view from behind down the line. I'm bending it, torquing it, letting it go, and it goes around me. When our club shaft flexes, we really want a combination of bend and torque. Most people have bend, but very few people have torque. Torque is a force that turns or twists. Most of you have seen a torque wrench. It turns or twists a nut to a certain amount of tightness. This mock-up of a shaft already has a little bit of twist. He's going to twist it more and let it untwist through the ball. By the time his hands have gone just below belt level, he has created enough bend and torque to let the shaft unleash through the ball. There is one muscle that will create both bend and torque, the teres minor. Its origin is on the back of the left scapula, and the arrow indicates which way it will contract. When the arm is across the chest at the end of transition, it will pull the arm forward and in toward the body. It also causes the arm to externally rotate. One muscle creates both bend and torque. Watch the teres minor rotate the left arm. It rotates, moves the arm forward, and brings the hands closer to the body. Here it is again, but remember, we're only going to go down to a little bit below waist high. Let's look at all the steps at the end of transition that are needed to create torque. At the end of transition, the weight needs to be on the left heel. Not the toe, not the heel, but the middle of the left heel. Next, the chest needs to stay closed until the hands are waist high. All the torque needs to be created by the time the hands go from shoulder high to waist high. You can see that the chest remains closed. The blue line represents the target line, while the green line represents the chest line. The left elbow needs to be higher than the right elbow, and the left bicep goes into the neck. You can see here that the left elbow is higher than the right elbow. If this doesn't happen, very little torque can be created. Throughout the entire swing, the right elbow needs to stay close to the left elbow. The left bicep has come into the neck. Jack shows us how to do it. At the top of the backswing, the butt of the club should point just beyond the right foot. While he's going toward his left heel during transition, 
his left bicep will be coming into his neck. Pretend the white circle is a clock. The left elbow is at 2 o'clock and the right elbow is at 8 o'clock. While the bicep is coming into the neck, the elbows are going to circle around until the left elbow is at 1 o'clock and the right elbow is at 7 o'clock. Now the butt of the club should be pointing at the target line. As we start the forward swing, the Terry's minor rotates the left arm. Both elbows should move back to their address position. These movements are what create the torque. Let's look at Cade and see how his left hand starts rotating immediately in the forward swing. Notice that his left arm keeps rotating his left hand until it gets to waist high. Again, his chest remains closed while his arms go forward and his hands come into his body. At the end of transition, the weight is on the middle of the left heel. I've showed you how to create torque by keeping the chest closed, getting the left elbow higher than the right, and using the Terry's minor to control the left arm. Now that we've flexed the club the correct way, there's only one thing left to do. Once we're at waist high and we've created the right amount of bend and torque, all we need to do is let that energy of the shaft go and it'll act as a turbocharger through impact. If we don't try to guide the club, it'll go right around us on a perfect plane. At waist high, Justin Thomas has created all the bend and torque he needs to create a turbocharger through impact. This is the secret to distance. My teaching partner Doug Weary and I decided to put a fiberglass stick inside of a tube at the end of transition. This allowed Ella and us to see how much torque was being created. It also gave her a feel of when to let the shaft go and release its power. You can really see how much speed the shaft creates through impact. It's the proper bend and torque that creates the speed. She could never create that speed trying to go all the way to the ball. After you let the shaft unload, don't try to lead the club through impact. Follow the club to the finish. Now you know how distance is created. You've seen the rainbow. Now take the right path and find the pot of gold. I teach at Denver Golf Performance. My phone number is 303-915-7117. Give me a call and come by and take a lesson.